This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Now we can record Continue. the yeah. Now we can record the uh, video as well. Um, mate, what'd you have for breakfast? That's the first question I always go with. Well, I got some cereal and I also got this oh, funky smelling thing, so I just ate the cornflakes. <laughs> when you say funky smelling thing, can you try and describe to me what it actually was? Mushrooms. <laughs> it was just mushrooms. You don't like mushrooms, but it's no, I do, but it just smells like disgusting and you just open it oh you open the container that it comes in and it just like hits you like a ton of bricks oh right and okay you just try not to spew but so it's not it's not a vibe let's talk about that though hotel quarantine so you're in brisbane right now yep i'm in brisbane city so what was it like i guess first question is your olympic experience yep so coming directly from that into hotel quarantine isolation how have you found the first four days? It's actually been not too bad because I've been receiving so many gifts and food from my followers. So that has been getting me through the days. My room is just full of flowers, food, all these different presents that I didn't even expect. And it's just, <laughs> it's insane how much stuff I've been sent. Okay, so let's... Let's talk about that then. That seems like a natural um, intro into that. So you mentioned in your post-race interview for the semi-final, you mentioned you didn't have a sponsor, you didn't have a lot of followers on. How many followers did you have on Instagram before you went to the Olympics? Um, when I was at home, I think I was at 15,000. Okay, so you still had a, a, like a decent following. I still, yeah, I still had a decent following and now I'm at, 106,000. <laughs> That's actually so bananas. Did you expect to grow that much when you like when you were leaving we were like this is mad. I'm going to I'm going to be able to become a, you know, quit ass and just become a full-time influencer with my uh, <laughs> with my following. I knew that major championships give you a little bit of followers. Like I think for Com Games I probably got around 5,000. Um so I expected maybe a few thousand, but definitely not. 85,000 that was I know 20 minutes after my race I told my friend Cedric that I was like I plugged my Instagram and he's like oh my gosh let me check it and 10 minutes after my race I jumped up 25,000 and I nearly fell over I was just in shock mate well I was one of those 25 when you were like go follow me on Instagram and Jason Richardson was interviewing you and said that you didn't have a sponsor so you mentioned that people are sending you things is that really weird getting like presents and donuts and things from like people who saw you and want to congratulate you? Is there a part of it that you feel is like a bit weird? Um, it's not actually. I find it really, it makes me really happy inside. I got woken up this morning by a pack of four donuts and some Shiraz. <laughs> so oh, wow. 20 to 8 in the morning, I get woken up by like some alcohol and some packed donuts full of butterscotch and caramel it's it's um I could definitely get used to that <laughs> have you had to limit yourself on eating the amount of food that people have sent you yeah I um I've tried not to let it go to waste so I've had I've eaten majority of it because I don't want anyone to waste their money of course um so I've I've definitely eaten most of it but I've been exercising a lot to make sure I don't <laughs> pack it on <laughs> what can you do in all seriousness you're an Olympic athlete, which is amazing in itself, but how do you keep fit? What kind of things are you doing in your room? Because I guess hopefully a lot of people that listen or, or watch this on YouTube, uh, I mean, not hopefully, but a lot of the country is in lockdown as well, right? So what kind of things are you yep. doing in your little tiny hotel room to keep fit? Um, literally just like high intensity workouts. It's only, they're only short, but you're sweating and you're puffing. So it makes it, it's a long 10 minutes that it hurts, but it's, it's good. It works. It does a trick. So after your quarantine, what's your plan yep. next? Have you got a big meet coming up next? I'm having two weeks off and I wanted to go on a holiday, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to with the lockdown and everything like that. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I qualified for the Com Games and the World Champs at the Olympics. So they're 
two weeks apart next year in like July and August or something like that. So that's really good and a lot of pressure off me. So I guess I'll just train now until to lead up to those two meets. Okay. So I want to take it back before the Olympics. So what did your life look like six months ago? What were you doing? Talk me through a day-to-day, a normal day six months ago. What was that? February? Yeah. I mean, sure. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly yeah. six months of the day, just roughly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was just training. I would go to training. I would also have uni. So I do uni as well. And then I would have work. So I'd be training full time to go to nationals and then obviously qualify for the Olympics. I haven't, I hadn't qualified at that point in time. So Wait, that's so what I was aiming towards. Earlier this year, you still, you hadn't qualified for the Olympics. No, I qualified in March. Okay, so how did that work though? Because obviously the Olympics were originally meant to be in 2020. So does that mean you wouldn't have qualified or had the qualifiers been pushed back until this year? The qualifiers had been pushed back. Um, So everything got locked down in around end of Feb, start of March last year. So pretty much the time that I wanted to qualify last year, I qualified this year. So I didn't get the chance to do the meets that I wanted last year to qualify. So it's all kind of worked out in the end. I think it was a blessing in disguise that COVID did hit because it it was, I was much better off for it. So you mentioned uni. What are you studying at uni? I'm a bachelor of business majoring in sports management. Okay. So long-term, is that what you want to work in sports management? Once you're obviously your career is just starting really, but yeah. Long term, is that what you want to do? It would be pretty cool um, to be a manager of the teams that I'm now on. It's a lot of work. I know that. So I respect the work that everyone puts in. Um, but I think it would be a cool avenue to go into. And I think I'd have an upper hand in that sort of department because I've been in the athlete's position and I know how they're feeling and what they kind of want. So maybe, but I haven't really thought that far ahead yet that's very fair mate i'm 32 and i still don't know what i want to do so <laughs> you've got plenty of time um working at woolies obviously as well yep so how do you fit in training between uni work and i guess just a normal regular life because obviously there's the majority of people who want to keep fit and train and go to the gym but I'm assuming to be an Olympic athlete, there's a level above that. So how do you fit that all in? What does your what what did a normal like Wednesday or Tuesday look like for you when you're fitting all three of those things in? So I'm a full time athlete, part time student, and then like a quarter time <laughs> worker. <laughs> um, so I only work around ten hours a week. It's okay. just a little bit of money to come in, and then so two shifts a week, Tuesday, Sunday. Uh, the only day I have off is Sunday. So I work Sunday and then I train in the morning. If I need to do uni, I'll do that in the middle of the day. And then if I need to go to work, I go to work that night. It all works pretty well. Um, it's perfectly balanced at the moment. So I'm not mad about it. So as someone who doesn't understand um, athletics or being a full-time athlete at all, how do you... You mentioned, again, that in that post-race interview about a sponsor. How does that work in terms of an athlete getting a sponsorship and what do they pay you for? Does that make sense? Can you just talk through that yep. process? Um, well, each contract's obviously different. It depends on what the company wants. But if a company's interested in you, they will most likely go to your commercial manager and do everything through them. They Most of the time, they don't even talk to you. They just tell them what you want, what they want. And then my manager will tell them what I want to do. So mostly everything's social media nowadays. So the more followers you have, the more chance you have of getting brand deals and everything like that, because you obviously have more exposure to more people. But yeah, it'll be like a few posts a month in your feed and then a few stories as well. And then they'll pay you X amount of money plus the product if you want it. So if you didn't have a sponsor before the Olympics, how were you like, and you were only working 10 hours a week, 
how are you like surviving? Do you know what I mean? Like how <laughs> how are you living in terms of like if you're training full time, then doing a bit of study and a bit of work, how did that all play out? Well, I still I still live at home, so that's okay. a big big expense done. Yeah. Um but the Queensland Academy of Sport pay for my like if I need to need an MRI or anything like that. Okay. Plus I have free video through that avenue. So a lot of my medical things are paid for. Yep. And then other than that, I don't really have the expenses other than that it's just travel. But you need to get the travel time to get travel funding, if that makes sense. Talk to me by about our that. organization. Yeah, okay. So it's there's a time that people have to run to get both of the oh. like, the travel travel funding times. So for you to get money to travel. Yeah, right. If that so, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So you, you have to run a specific time in your yep. whatever race. Or, Event. Yeah. Yep. Right. Because obviously, that I yeah. mean, I don't want to be harsh, but they're not going to pay for the shit people to go, right? Like they're only going to pay for no. the best people to go. Yeah. The gist of That's that. exactly right. Yep. Okay. So what's a normal day of training look like for you as a full-time athlete? So it, it depends on the day. Um, I might just go through my week. Yeah. Yeah. So Sunday, Sunday, I obviously have off Monday. I'll do a backup session of track and gym. And then Tuesday I'll do um, speed stuff. So I'll do out of blocks, I think. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been a while. How long are you doing um, these sessions for? Like how long is a track session? So I'll probably get there at around eight and I won't leave till like 12. Okay. That's with doing everything, recovery as well. Um, so Monday, track and gym. Tuesday, track. Wednesday, gym and massage. Thursday, track. Friday, gym. Saturday, track. And then I have physio in there somewhere. Right. So it's basically a combination of in the gym, working on specific exercises that help you and your chosen event. Right. So at what point did you realize that you could make a career out of running really fast? Um, Like, because you're only 21, right? So you're still pretty young. Yep. But were you 16 and you were like, oh shit, I could probably go to the Olympics in a few years. Like, did that become a realization at some point? Yeah, 2016, I was 16. So I was watching Rio. Yep. And I was like, this could be my last Olympics that I watch, potentially. I was still coming up through those years. And then the next year, I got chosen for the Nitro Athletics. And then from there, I think I just got put out in front of everyone. And then from there, I was like, okay, I could make this work. But it was a lot of struggling in between that to get to where I am now. The injuries between 2017 to now were rattling. Can you talk me through? Are you comfortable telling me about some of those injuries? Yeah. Yeah, so I had a, like, obviously hamstrings are a massive issue for sprinters. You have to have the right technique, otherwise it's going to blow out. Um, Stress fractures in my shins, so I had, like, shin splints. They are not fun. Like think of pain and then that is shin splints. (laughs) So I had that. That troubled me for probably two, three years. Um, I had a back issue. I had a heel issue. Um, Toes. I had a stress reaction in my toe. So that ended me in a moon boot like three weeks before World Champs 2019. so when you've had all these injuries, though, is there any point where you're like, no, nah, this is too hard. I'm just going to do uni and work more hours at Woolies. You know what I mean? No, I never thought that. Um, I knew that it would, like, the hard work that I did now would make me better in the future. I just, my thing for rehab is to do it properly, take my time coming back, not to rush it, to make sure it never comes back again. Because a massive mistake athletes make when trying to come back from an injury is coming back too fast. And then it happens again and again and again, the same injury. So I would rather take an extra four weeks to come back into running properly than 
be four weeks ahead of what I would be and get the injury again and then be eight weeks behind again. Yep. So, okay, can we talk about your experience over there in the Olympics? Can you, like, lift the curtain and take us behind the scenes as to, like, how many COVID tests you had and the athletes' village and what it was like over there? So we got tested every day for COVID, but it wasn't the the nose one. It was like a spit test. Ew. So that was really gross. <laughs> yeah, um, right. So we had to do that. We had to do that every day. And then if we got, if one of us got deemed as a close contact, then we had to get a nose one. We went into lockdown a few times for COVID scares, but it all turned out well in the end. Um, it was actually really well run COVID wise. Like I was very paranoid before my race because I just had like three masks masks on. Cause I was like, I'm not getting COVID. Yeah. I've come this far. If I was to get it now, it would be devastating. Um, the food hall, we had to sanitize before we went in, put gloves, like these plastic gloves on, sanitize our little station that we sat in, which was like covered by perspex like glass yeah wow. so it was like little cubes um so you couldn't really hear each other through the through the glass or plastic or whatever it was um and then we had we weren't allowed to like associate with other countries because obvious reasons um right so you so were was- yeah so you were only allowed to sit with and talk to and eat at the same time as the other australian athletes you couldn't help it in the dining hall because there was obviously other people in there. Yeah. But the Aussie Olympic Committee did an unreal job at making our building so safe. And there was chairs for us to sit down outside to watch our like fellow teammates compete. And yeah. there was a nutrition center underneath where it had like Australian foods where we could go and eat if we needed it to save us from going to the dining hall. Um, what kind recovery of recovery centers? What kind there was of, gyms as well. What kind of food was in the dining hall? Everything that you'd want. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, literally everything. Yeah, great. It was like world stuff, um, Japanese, halal, um, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free. Yeah, okay. Everything, yeah. Are you, are you on any particular diet? Like are you any of those, vego, gluten-free, you eat it all? No, no, all good. So when you were now something that they were talking about in the news was that the beds were like made out of cardboard or something to stop the yeah outbreak. is that were the beds was your bed made out of cardboard? Yep. Um, I when I whenever I go somewhere I always run and jump on the bed <laughs> just to see how it's like to see how comfy it is. So I did it and I ran and I jumped and no joke the mattress is like hard as a rock. So I like winded myself <laughs> jumping on the bed, Yeah. but it was actually surprisingly comfy. Okay. Like it was hard as a rock, but you slept so good. It was really surprising. But by the end of the two, like however long we were there, you could see like the bed starting to oh, really? like crink, like crease a little bit yep. in certain areas. Like the legs were starting to like, boop. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you, at any point when you were sleeping on it, did you feel like it was going to collapse or just looking at it, it looked a bit dodgy by the end? Um, no, it was, it was pretty good. Only if you like went looking for it, then yeah, okay. it was, but the last night it was just people were just jumping on them and they were, they were ruined. <laughs> Didn't take much though. I can't believe that they made them out of cardboard and they stayed. Was it like a norm? Like I'm literally picturing cardboard that something gets to, like a fridge comes in. Like, is that what it was or was it some weird? Yeah. Japanese no, that's literally that's... what it, that's literally what it was. Okay, right. Just thick, sturdy cardboard. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. Quarantine. Back to quarantine. How is that going in terms of Athletics Australia? Are they like doing things for you guys? Like, do you have fun Zoom? I think I saw you on last night. You were playing some kind of Zoom clip. trivia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So can I you tr- sucked at it. <laughs> what do you remember? Any of the, was there a theme to the trivia, or was it just general? Yep, it was Olympic history. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I got probably two right because I'm just <laughs> hopeless at like general knowledge. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, no, the AOC have all these workshops and things that we can join into every day. 
we get an email every morning saying day whatever it is quarantine it's called <laughs> um so there's <laughs> So there's heaps of workshops that we can join into if we need, and there's yep. people we can call if we need to just chat. So it's it's really good. They've thought of everything. Have you? How do you feel coming out of the Olympics as a 21 year old Australian Olympic athlete that you have that title? You ran your PB in the 200. Like, where? How are you feeling at the moment? I'm feeling great. Um, I think it's, I'm still riding on that high and I'm just waiting for it to kind of like come down because <laughs> there is, a, there's literally like a certain point, it'll go like that and you're just like, oh, I'm just a normal human again. <laughs> but, you know, it's part of the ride. Um, everyone loves the Olympics when it's on, but they'll quickly forget about it as well. But I take the positives as it comes. So, and everyone's been really supportive of me. I haven't seen any sort of negativity. So happy with it. Well, that's <laughs> what is hard, right? Because whether it's AFL footballers or NRLW players, they're playing yep. for six months a year, generally. Yeah. Your events are only really in the spotlight, I guess, every two years in terms of Com Games and Olympics. Yeah. But... Will you now try and come up with that you do have a really big following on socials, over 100,000? Will you like try and sit with a manager or whatever and come up with a plan to try and keep your content coming or keep, you know what I mean? Like in the public eye, not, yeah. in, a, not in a bad way, but that's your job, right? Like you've got to do that to make a living. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely very important to stay active on social media. I'll admit I've been very lazy in the past because. I go to training and I train. I don't go there and I don't take photos. I go there and do the work that I need to do. And then I go home and do the right things, um, like recover and whatever else. Um, but I think now that I do have a bigger following, I will need to be more conscious of it mm -hmm. just so I can stay on top of the engagements and stuff like that. It's just, oh. I'm new to this. It's it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot, but I'm like the value that you would add to people when they're scrolling and all the Australian athletes that we've now discovered through the Olympics is so much more than what people get from, you know, your influencers that are posting their bikini shots at the beach that get, you know, $5,000, $5,000 a post from Bondi Sands. Like the joy that you bring people is so much more. Your post-race interview, the Rowan Brownings, the Matt Dennings, like it's. Yep. A, did you have a favourite moment? Obviously, besides your race of the Olympics that you're yep. watching. Um, I definitely loved just watching all of my friends perform to their best. I remember watching Rowan back at the village and I was like, oh, I just hope he goes well here. And he goes out and he beats Johan Blake. Yeah. And I've just jumped up and I've just, I couldn't believe it. I was in complete shock. And then Cedric and Ash, absolutely killing it. Nicola coming second, being there to watch it all. Matt coming fourth. Everyone competed so well. Um, obviously Peter as well coming fourth. I was so, I feel so like, privilege to be there watching it live because it was so special to be able to support them and be there for them when they like were at the highest point in their life and knowing that there was actually a support system there even though it wasn't their family it was close they could get at that point in time so it was it was awesome to be there with our little maracas and our <laughs> tambourines <laughs> cheering everyone on did you guys get a sense of what it meant to Australia back here that a lot of places were in lockdown and were getting so much joy out of watching you all compete, do us all proud. And also that everyone that competed did really well. Like I think they were saying that this was our best Olympic since Sydney or since, I don't know, since somewhere. Yeah, it was the best Olympics like in a while. Did you get yeah. a sense of how much that meant to Australians while the Olympics was happening? I love that it made such a positive impact in everyone's lives because a lot of people didn't obviously didn't want it to happen because they weren't sure of how safe it was going to be. But I think everyone is glad that it actually brought a lot of joy and happiness into 
their lives for a short time and then the Paralympics are coming up as well. So they're, I love watching the Paras. There's such amazing stories behind every single athlete there. But it's, it's awesome to know that people at home got comfort watching these people. And I've had so many messages saying that, like, you guys have inspired me to get back out there and do what I want to do. Like, I'm going to go... And, and I'm going to achieve it because you guys inspired me to do it. And I was just like crying. <laughs> so it's you, awesome. It's awesome to see. So you do get a sense then of what it means to people. And it is great that you are getting those messages. Do you have to check yourself that I was about to say you're, you're so young, but you aren't like, you don't realize you're young, like you're 21 and that's how old you are. And you've lived the life you have, but is it cool to be yeah. making that impact at your age? It's, I don't, yeah, I don't really see myself as this young, but it's also like I potentially have so long left in my career that it could just keep going. It could, and it could be positive for so many people potentially in 2032. So it's awesome to know that there's still like 11 years of, it's, it's weird to say like inspiring people. I don't know. It's weird for me to say that, but it's also really exciting and it makes me want to work harder. So it's back. It, it's back. I've got it. In the, <laughs> in the Australian Olympic team, you've obviously got a lot of people that do a lot of different events or sports. Like you've got equestrian riders yep. and cyclists and swimmers and athletes. So yep. everyone who's watching looks at the track and field athletes, especially the 100, 200 meter sprinters as like the showpiece events are you guys in the team considered heaps cooler than like the equestrian <laughs> riders do you know what i mean like is there like segregation within, <laughs> within the team of like the cool athletes and the i don't want to say not cool because everyone's amazing obviously just having yeah. fun but like do you know what i mean is there stereotypes within the team um not well i haven't been to a normal olympics but i didn't see most of the sports right. while we were there um because of people were separated i don't know but it's like yeah the track and field people definitely know where the main event like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, i mean the whole track and field not just sprinters yeah okay like track and field is the main event of the olympics yeah it is it's like one of the main sports um so a lot of people were around it but not many people knew our names before going into it if that makes sense yeah because track and field doesn't get a lot of coverage in Australia. So that's why I love the Olympics is because it puts our names into households and it can potentially get a young kid to start athletics, which makes their siblings start. And then it's like more participation kind of thing because without younger participation, our sport dies as well. So I guess that's why if we like the, the more we perform, the more people start it as well. Now, are you guys told, like, how did you have much media training before you went? Because yourself, Peter, and Rowan, all when you were interviewed, showed really great personalities. Like, you obviously swore there were a couple of, oh, I got, get Oops. them confused. Yeah, Emma <laughs> McKeon and Kaylee McEwen. Or, Kaylee McEwen? Yeah. Swore? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you get told to just be yourself? Did you have a lot of media prep before, in like, in the lead up to going over there? Um, no, nothing from the Olympic side of things. Yeah. Um, in the past I've done media things, but I knew that to have the most impact on people, I needed to be myself. Some people would hate it. Some people would love it, but I needed to, couldn't fake who I was because I'm an open book and I couldn't go in there and be someone who I'm not. Um, but I think the people who did have the most impact were the ones that were authentic and Matt Denny with his like Brandon Stark roommate and his little zip yeah, thingy. Yeah. Like, it just, it shows personality and that we're not serious all the time and that we actually, we do have a laugh and we're not just like yeah athlete kind of thing. Yeah. Like Rowan and his mullet. Like that's a whole thing. I'm yeah. Su- I wouldn't be surprised if there's a Twitter account <laughs> just for Rowan Browning's mullet. Like that. I saw so many articles about that mullet. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. And every Aussie would have looked at it and gone, 
oh, I love that guy. How could, yeah, how good's his yep. mullet? Like, he's just he's so relatable. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. And Brandon Stark, like I also read, because he was fifth in high, the high jump and that yeah. he, the jump that he made would have got... Would have meddled, meddled in, in every it. single one. Yeah. Like so yeah. stiff. But again, now people know Brandon Stark and now yeah. hopefully people can continue to follow all of your journey. So Nitro Athletics, you mentioned that before. Yeah. Is, what's Nitro Athletics? It was a meet that... I think AA hosted back in 2017 that they plan to run over three consecutive years, but I think it, I don't know what happened there. Oh, okay. um, but there was a use, like there was a f- like three or four, five countries that came. So obviously Australia, Japan was one, um, something else and something else. And then there was the <laughs> Bolt All Stars. I can't remember. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we just competed over three meets or something like that in different, like different events. So there was like a 60, 150, um, a, 60. a mixed four, yeah, 60 meters. Um, yeah, right. And then we just all got points. And then at the, at the end, the winner oh, cool. got the trophy. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's a bit of fun. Yeah. So you mentioned. Yeah, it was really fun. You mentioned that Com Games and was, did you say World Champs is next year? Yep. So they're mid-year next year and they're kind of the next yep. big events that you've got coming up and you'll just be kind of training between now and then? Yep, that's my plan. Now that I've qualified for both, it leaves an, an open book of who, what co- like competitions I can go to. Mm-hmm. What I need to do, I obviously have to do nationals to qualify for them to be an automatic selection. Yep. Um, but other than that, there's no meet that I have to do in the lead up because... I've got that massive weight off my shoulder. When I'm jumping all around here, so I apologize. Um, when okay. you were at the Olympics and you were, you had Shelly Ann Fraser Price in your heat, didn't you? Um, in my semi. Semi. Um, yep. What was that like when you knew, like, do you, did you look up to her? Do you, is she a big deal? Cause like I follow, what I follow world athletics, I think on Instagram and they have so many videos yep. of her. She just looks like a real fucking vibe, like her big hair. Yeah. She's little. Is that intimidating when you're racing against someone like that? Um, no. It was it was pretty funny though because <laughs> what a shit question. No, nah, mate. They're all, they're all the same. <laughs> um, like she's obviously a, is she's an awesome athlete and she's a mum as well, which makes it even better. Yeah. Um, and then she goes out and. What, she gets second at um, in the 100? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's in the core and she's brushing her hair and I'm just like, really? <laughs> Here I am like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm shitting myself. <laughs> but she's just like, oh, da, 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 da. I'm brushing my hair. And I was like, wow, to be you, yep. to be relaxed. <laughs> I mean, I was relaxed, but not to the point of brushing my hair. <laughs> Dude, would that not... With the hair right and all the sprinters that wear the big gold chains and stuff, does that not slow yep. them down? Like, obviously, when we're talking about, like, one one-hundredth of a second and stuff, does that not make a difference? Um, Probably, but they want to stand out. So, that's their way of doing it, I guess. <laughs> and I guess standing out is a way to get sponsors as well. So but surely wouldn't winning that's their... be the best way to stand out if you took <laughs> all your chains off? Well, you'd think so, but there might be some sort of meaning behind what yeah, okay. they do. Um, yeah, right. I know that I wear my necklace because it's good luck, but it is, it is only tiny. Can you even see it? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. Like yeah. real. Yeah. That's tiny. Yeah. But you know, some of the but, male sprinters who have the big hectic chains yeah, the and the sunnies. big thick ones. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I don't sense. know. I don't know their logic behind it. Um, it has probably has some meaning or, or I know the Sunnies would be a sponsor. So that's their thing of, Oh, okay. I have to wear it yep. to be like, that's their requirement. Okay. Have you had yep. um, approaches from sponsors now since the Olympics? Um, there's definitely been a few. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, yeah. Everyone, may, obviously we can't reveal anything, but just make sure we no. follow along on your Insta story. Um, yes. It'll you, be coming soon. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, Riley, we've reached this point of the podcast. I'm going to ask you to make a big call. I still haven't thought about it. (laughs) 
Okay, so... I can't think of anything. Um, um, so I've had uh, Aussie basketball Joe Ingalls. I've had his wife on the podcast, Renee Ingalls, great yep. Australian netballer. Yep. Her big call was that she snacks on frozen peas and corn. Real oh, random. Yum. Yeah, right. Do you do? Do you have any uh, weird habits? Sleep with your socks on. You think I'm chicken twisties are bit better than cheese? You know, something that's a bit odd that you do. Nothing. Um, I don't know. I'm literally like <laughs> stunned right now. <laughs> um. Oh my god. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll, ch- I'll change it. What's something that no one would know about you? This is worse. <laughs> because <laughs> everyone, oh, no. Um, I think people know this about me, but I don't know. But I have a pet cow called Moomoo. That's fun. <laughs> Tell me about Moomoo. Um, I've had her for probably like 13 to 15 years now. Wow. So she's, yeah, she's, a, she's an old Moomoo. Um, but since I was probably like seven, I've had her and I'm like 21 now. So she's cool. Do you go we like, what do you, do you like, what do you do with a pet cow? <laughs> well, she roams around the paddock, Yeah. but when I was younger, she used to like sit under the patio with my dog mm. and she came inside one time <laughs> accidentally. And cause like they have little hoofs. Yeah. She just went Zoop, and slipped because <laughs> like, she has no grip on yep. her feet. Well, hoofs. So she just went dunk on the ground. <laughs> How did you get her up? Aren't cows really well, heavy? She was, she was only little at that point. Okay, so right. she, we just like, picked her up and like pushed her out. But she's cool. Do you have... So I'll, have to, I'll have to send you a photo. Yes, please do. So I was trying to do research. Is the place you live called Bow Desert? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yep. right. So that's an hour from, in my research, an hour from Brizzy and an hour from the Gold Coast? Yep, and that's that, correct. And that's where you live with Moomoo? Yep. Moomoo yeah. lives there. <laughs> Moomoo lives there. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, well, Riley, I can't wait for you to um, get home to Bow Desert and flick me a photo of Moomoo um, when you're yep. hanging out in the paddock. Oh, I have some on my camera roll, but I have to scroll up and find it. Uh, okay, right. Chuck it on yeah. your story. Let us all meet Moomoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Riley Day thank you so much for your time thanks for having a chat and best of luck with your training uh, and world champs thank you. nationals and com games next year thank you